Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Vancouver, British Columbia. This is OpenStack Summit Live. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Bobby Patrick, who's the CMO of HP Cloud. Welcome back to theCUBE. Oh, it's great to great be great here. Great to see you. It's great to be here, John. Um, HP Cloud is really dominating in the OpenStack community, just in, yeah. in earning it's right. You guys have been involved from day one, helped from formation, one of the top contributors, if not, right. I think the top right. code contributors. Yeah, for Kilo. Um, and now, um, holding sessions and having right. a great party tonight. Everyone's talking <laughs> about the party. Um, what's going on? Give us well, a we, you know, tutorial. We're, what's happening on stage you know, If you here? recall, a year ago we announced HP Helion, right? This was the, the, the brand to pull it all together across HP. And uh, open standards, open source were commitment from, the, from you know, Meg Whitman across the whole company. Uh, billion dollar commitment actually from, uh, from the, from the uh, CFO, right? That was just tremendous. And I think what's happening is we're really delivering on that, right? You look at the customers that are on stage now like Fox or DreamWorks, uh, or you know, customers like Alcatel Lucent or Intralinks that are in taking our Helium OpenStack and putting it in their offerings and making better offerings. You know, we've come a long way in a year now. We've got, uh, uh, you know, we're committing more code upstream to OpenStack than really any other company. Uh, uh, code reviews, code commits, uh, and uh, uh, code changes, and we are delivering customers. We're making it simpler for enterprise to adopt, right? We're going past the stage now of science projects and really into the type A companies using it. And uh, I think you know, that investment's paying off and it's showing here at a, at a really terrific event. Gardner, pretty, pretty, you mentioned science projects. That was a headline at the register. The Gardner analyst basically calling OpenStack science projects. Right. And it backpedaled a little bit, but that's essentially what he's saying. Mostly on the management side of it, it's talking about. But right. I mean, that's kind of a, they've been negative on OpenStack. I right. Mean, but the game's changing. It's, a, it's not just, I mean, what doesn't Gardner not understand? There's certainly the yeah. science projects out there. Yeah. But the message here is in production, the sessions are packed, yeah. people are sitting on the floor. I mean, yeah. it's pretty, Intense here. Well, Gartner's infatuated with public cloud, right? And um, and that's certainly the, the numbers there are are impressive, right? I think the you know our view is that the the path to hybrid cloud, which is where most enterprises want to be, they'll have multiple clouds. Uh, by some estimates, ten clouds in just three years. The path to hybrid, we believe, begins with private cloud. You know, Amazon's not focused on compatibility with other clouds, and we are. So we've have bought Eucalyptus. Uh, you know. Pure, pure, pure mock-up of, of, of AWS compatibility. OpenStack is all about you know private cloud elasticity and and programmability, and uh, so I think what's happening is you know Forrester today great or this at this event a great report. Lauren Nelson, if you saw hers about OpenStack is real, um, I think uh, there are analysts to get it. There are other analysts that are you know, holding different different views, but we've come a long way in a year, right? And I yeah, think, yeah. you know, come next year. It's, it was easy to be skeptical even two years yeah, ago. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know. you've got big companies on stage now. Uh, we've got, there's a lot of great successes, and uh, and I think private cloud as, a, as an area of focus is now becoming recognized. People are realizing, you know, secure data, like sensitive information, IP, right? It's not going to go, you know, your traditional apps. Are you going to put your traditional apps on the public cloud and rewrite them? No. So a private cloud actually is built yeah. for traditional apps and built for cloud native, and that's where our focus is. So I got to ask you, obviously, there was an article in the New York Times about HP getting on the public cloud. We all right. know that was not true. Bill right. Hilf was misquoted. Right. Quentin Hardy probably went to market with it. So on around the Amazon summit. Yes or no, are you guys in the public cloud business? We have a public cloud and run a public cloud today and it's based on OpenStack. We are in the business though of helping customers use multiple clouds and we're okay with compatibility. You can yeah. use Helium today and you can burst out to Amazon. You can burst to Azure someday in China. You can burst to Alibaba. Um, we believe that you know our cloud's part of a hybrid strategy, but you know for us to say that we're you know our our public cloud is going to be the one everybody uses, yeah, that's not yeah. going to happen. So there's a nuance here. I want to be. This is a clear. Let's, right. let's get let down the weeds. It's important because I, I, we've been right. following it, so we know. Right. I want to get this clarified to the audience out there. So it might be someone might take the assertion, oh, they're not in the public cloud business, meaning not a pure play public cloud. General purpose commodity you public cloud. You have a public cloud, you are not getting out of the public cloud component of right. your architecture. Your clients burst between private, hybrid, and, and public. Right. So it's a totality of the cloud strategy right. to have a public component. But if you think about HP's expertise, right, and 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 uh, I've learned a lot in my last year with HP, our, our customers, the enterprise, traditional enterprise IT, healthcare companies, sensitive data, traditional apps. You know, we're focused on moving those to cloud, 
and then helping our customers broker and manage multiple clouds, and then helping them build, you know, ultimately go cloud native, go native, right? And uh, that focus on traditional apps is not what an Amazon's focused on. So I think, you know, we're, we're focused on a big part of the, of the cloud market, and you, know, you can't do it all. Just like Amazon doesn't have a private cloud today and doesn't, doesn't go after traditional apps. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so Bobby, some great points there. Uh, one of the things we've been hearing at the show, talking about things like interoperability, yeah. uh, but right. very much in an open stack viewpoint. As you said, customers are doing a lot of things. It's a multi-cloud world. Right. You know, your customers, they, they're using Amazon, they're using Office 365, they're using Salesforce. Right. Uh, how does HP look at uh, you know, helping to orchestrate, help to you know, pull together all the various pieces uh, of the cloud solutions that, that customers do for their various yeah, apps? So we we believe, again, the road yeah. to, to hybrid and the hybrid cloud management begins with private cloud. So we offer a single tool with the Helion, with Helion called Cloud Service Automation, and you can broker out to Amazon, you can broker out to, to you can burst out to, to Azure. One tool to control it all, where's your data? Where's your data located right now? Where your work, workload's located? Uh, our viewpoint, though, is that the private cloud's the control point, and the private cloud's what gives you the view into all the different kind of clouds that you want to use. So we absolutely want to play in that hybrid cloud management control area. You know, we believe in compatibility with all the clouds, which is why we bought Eucalyptus. And that proof point, right, should answer the public cloud question pretty clearly. Yeah, well, well Bob, Bobby, we know changing apps is really hard. Right. And most apps today are kind of those traditional apps that right. I need to have the, them control right. of them, so therefore they're on site. Uh, you know, going up the stack to changing right. the applications is a big part of Helion. Can you talk about how it's, you know, well beyond kind of the infrastructure layer and, you know, how HP is helping to change those apps? Yeah, so, so you know, we're, we're committed at the infrastructure layer from uh, elasticity and object storage and the things you need, but also at the programmability, PaaS layer. So Cloud Foundry is a huge, another one. You mentioned our open stack work. Our work in Cloud Foundry is equally uh, 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 significant, right? And we're bringing those two together. We're one of the few to actually build and integrate the two together, one common identity, making it very easy for both the developer and the operators to work together. You know, I, I, again, the idea that you can run a traditional app on, on, on a private cloud, get, we, what we're finding is, a, is the customers who've deployed their traditional apps onto a private cloud, in about 12 months, get a 40% cost advantage by doing that. They're freeing resources up. When a server goes down on the weekend, they don't have to come in and fix it anymore because the architecture's better. So the, the, my point is that that, that that focus on traditional apps, again, is not where anyone else is focused on when it comes to benefiting from cloud. Yeah. So cloud's a portfolio to you guys. You look at the cloud as a variety of solutions, so it's not like the pure play. Everyone's infatuated with public cloud right. and Amazon. And it's been that way for a while. Right. What's changing that now, in your opinion? I have my opinion, right. but it, you know, two years ago it was easy. Oh, Amazon's winning, be like Amazon, and that's truly not the case. I They're a unique animal in themselves, yeah. but in the enterprise, which they I don't have a presence. I think you're finding, John, that, that the healthcare IT, whether you're healthcare IT, or your financial services IT, or you're an insurance company, that there's a general, there's a general need to transform IT to disrupt the business models, disrupt with, with disruptive IT, and you need, you need to do something different. And in healthcare IT, uh, what we're seeing right now is that uh, there's deployments of cloud today to help speed clinical trials, to help save patients' lives, but the reality is 95% of that sensitive data, the HIPAA compliant data, is not going to go to Amazon, it's going to sit on a private cloud. Somewhere secure, somewhere you can you well, can. That brings up a good point. What's the language of the customer? No one. The language of the customer isn't like pass or no. It's outcomes. Private. They they look it's, at resources and, and what's available to them. Well, it's and, and it, take it up a level, right? It's what outcomes matter, right? How do I free up my IT resources that are constrained, managing existing systems, but more importantly, how do I help have IT grow the business? How do I build? Uh, how do I increase customer satisfaction? How do I collaborate better with my my, my partners? And cloud is a big part of that. What specific conversations are you are you having with customers? Be specific, like, not just on outcomes, but like try to drill down that you're having top three conversations that are going on with HP and their customers. Yeah, how do I how do I with okay. with, con with context the cloud? Right. So it's really how do you make it simple for me? Right. This is how how can you really take me on this on on this? And then the big gap are skills because mm -hmm. it's not just technology; it's people and process. So can you provide the skills, the training, the education? Uh, can you compliment my, compliment my teams? We have a large OpenStack professional services team that a year ago we didn't even exist. It's worldwide with some of the best skills in OpenStack. That's because the skills part of the equation is really important. So I think it's not just technology, it's people in process. Um, it's things like, hey, you can benefit from private cloud with your existing world today and free up resources and then do new. Uh, those conversations are very frequent and they're in every industry. Yeah, so, so Bobby, uh, HP's a big contributor to what's going on at OpenStack, right. talked about the Cloud Foundry piece. Can you talk about, are there customers that you're jointly developing with? Because that's a big story here at the OpenStack. Yeah, so in, in certain industries like telco, right? Yeah. Uh, where, where, where people want to use OpenStack to virtualize networks, it's called network functions virtualization, get tons of cost savings, but they also want to reinvent their business. They want to go create new services. 
you know, they're all into OpenStack, but they're saying, you know what, I might create some secret sauce here. I may not want it all to go upstream. And so what we found, here's a, here's a change we found over the last year. A year ago, we would have said, we really want to package up and make OpenStack simple and make it repeatable. What we're finding is, particularly in industries like telco, is it's, it's custom. You've got to be able to go in there, augment it. Each, each company has a bit of a different strategy and they want to extend it. And they may want to keep some of that still private for competitive advantage. And so you've got to be able to, to provide the services along with the software to help make that telco successful. For the folks out there watching the horn here, it's, I'm looking out over some cruise ships. We're in <laughs> Vancouver. It's a great venue. You've got a party going on tonight. Um, the vibe here is very, very strong this year. Right. Like you're seeing a lot of learning. Again, it brings me back to the old VMware days when there was early ecosystem, the old Microsoft days in the 90s. Yeah. I mean, people are sitting on the floors. I mean, this isn't like, it's beyond the hype. Yeah. I mean, it's actually really happening. It's on a path to, to maturity uh, with OpenStack. Um, what's the vibe here? Inside it, the venue, just share your observations. What you are you know, noticing? I think the big difference is people this time are proud. Right, so for example, we have these, uh, and you might want to, John, put one of these on your, on your suit here. <laughs> but we have, for, for all of the projects, we have these you know, Trove Troopers, Swift Justice for the Swift Project, right? Uh, Ironic Alchemist, right? Keystone Kings, right? And it, you know, it's kind of interesting, people are lining up to get these and to iron them on to their hoodies or maybe their suit jacket or not, right? Um, because they want to show off what they've done, right? Because Swift is now working. It's now under a lot of big applications and it's a great object storage distributed platform right today. Um, I think what's happening is there's excitement, but people are starting to see the you know in, enterprises using it, getting value out of it, and there's a lot of people here who are very proud now. A lot of these yeah. PTLs who started early on, Mark in Toronto, you'll speak with him tomorrow. He started early on when, when, yeah. when this was like a 45 person conference saying how important this is. There, we're now seeing the returns yeah. from that, yeah. and I think people are proud. So the passion of the early income, the early guys right. are still here. The founders are still around, I call them founders, lack yeah. of a better description, early community. But yet the entrance of the big guy, Oracle's yeah. here, yeah. IBM, yeah. Cisco, yeah. Red Hat, HP, and the list I haven't goes noticed on and most on. of those here, but I mean, yes. No, but those those big people can come in and screw up a community, right? Or the early guys get forced out because it's like all oh, the big vendors are coming in. But this is different now. I mean, what I mean, do you see the same thing we were talking earlier around? There's a nice balance between the passion and energy, the proud proudness of the early guys and the achievements, but also the contribution from the open source business model of the big vendors, I'd say it, they're not here to right. burn the village, they're here right. to contribute and actually add value. Yeah. Talk about that dynamic, well, share your perspective I, I think it has a lot to do with the customers now that are here. It's not, again, it's not the few science projects that we heard about it over and over. It's these type A enterprises now who are saying, I'm going to go get competitive advantage. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want cloud throughout my business, you know, and I want to you know, disrupt my business. I want to run like a startup. Mm -hmm. I mean, we hear this more and more from enterprises now. I want to run like a startup. I want to be able to, to, to do not just four application releases a year, I want to be able to do 40 application releases a year. And you know, doing that requires a you know, cloud-like platform and, and a, you know, a DevOps or other kinds of culture changes. And you know, you've got companies here today uh, that we're seeing throughout that, that weren't here six months ago, weren't in Paris, obviously weren't in the prior conferences, that are, 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 are diving in. And that's what I think shows the, the excitement. Yeah, so B Bobby, it, it's interesting. This whole maturation of cloud, it, it, originally it was like, great, we said the kind of public cloud infatuation, right. and then some people said, well, maybe software's going to change anything, and hardware doesn't matter at all. Right. Uh, actually, like one of the things that HP's done recently, what was called the bright box, right. is, you know, it, hardware gets commoditized some, right. software takes care of it more, but I need somebody to put all the pieces together, right. give me that hug and the support right. and everything. So, can, can you maybe speak a little bit right. on that? Well, so infrastructure definitely matters, and I yeah. think what's interesting, if you go to our booth, right, the HP booth, what do you find in there? Dell and Cisco equipment. I mean, I can say that again, right? In our booth are other vendors' equipment, right? They, they're throwing their stuff in your booth? It's, it's in our booth, you know, it's, and it gets certified to work with Helium because vendor lock-in is a really big issue and we yeah. want to, to, to help minimize it. Having said that, you know, the right hardware to solve the right problems is critical. And HP has, you know, cloud line servers that are scale out fast, slim line servers for object storage, did, uh, DL pro line servers for analytics and big workloads. And if we can put a, a, uh, an architecture together that's smart, that helps deliver an end-to-end -end solution better, that's what, you know, a lot of type A customer, uh, you know, science projects, maybe not. Type A businesses and the next generation of adopters for, for cloud, you know, they're going to look to that end-to-end -end solution. They're going to want that support of the middle, middle of the night when something goes wrong, right? Um, so I think it's, it's a combination of all that. And you know, infrastructure matters. It's just a question of what's the right infrastructure for the right use case. You guys got HP Discover coming up, which right. big event, we'll be there with theCUBE, so it'll be exciting. And I'm sure there's a slew of announcements that you can't talk about uh, coming together. Uh, I've heard some rumblings, so I won't kind of 
let the genie out of the bottle, but I want to get your right. personal perspective because I think, you know, HP is doing a lot of great work right. in cloud and and there's been changes, there's been turmoil, there's been focuses, billion dollar investment. Right. There's a lot of meat on the bone. So I want you to just take a quick moment in the segment here and just share what's going on with HP from your perspective. Give the quick commercial, talk about yep. what you've done, what's shipping, what's game changing, yep. and just lay it out there. Well, we're making, at the top line, we're making a, a fundamental change across the board to to solutions and outcomes that that transcend different parts of the, of the business. So. Uh, you know, one of the big, big transformational areas is helping companies transform to a hybrid infrastructure, right? That includes Helium, that includes other technology components. So we're coming together with a solution focus versus a product or business unit line focus that, we, that, that we've done in the past. Separately, we've got some big announcements. We've got a big, big cloud one, and we're going to have on stage some big customers, some of the top manufacturers, top healthcare companies in the world, who are going to get on stage and talk about saving, saving money, but more importantly, driving business growth and, and moving to the cloud, and traditional applications and how they benefit to the cloud. So I think you know, it's going to be use cases, it's going to be customers, outcomes, and successes, um, but it's going to be it's going to be feel like one. Is, you know we're splitting in, 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 in November, on November 1st, right? Yeah. Into two companies. The, the Hewlett Packard Enterprise side, right, which is you know focused on on uh, enterprise technology infrastructure and uh, software for business and and cloud, you know it's going to look like a very solution, combined focused proposition, solution oriented, um, and uh, I think that'll be clear and present across the show. And, and customers are asking for it. And and just quick highlights. What, what should people know about HP Cloud? You're in business, you're doing stuff, you're selling product. Yeah, so we have the number one private cloud solution in the world. Several several vendors, uh, Forrester Wave, uh, but also uh, Synergy recently came out and said, again, we're the number one solution for private cloud today. Most people don't know that. That's a big deal, it's a big business. We don't disclose the numbers, but it's a big business. Yeah. It's growing fast. There are a lot of companies that are going to be there talking about the, the benefits of, of, of private cloud. And, uh, and we're going to demonstrate you know, hybrid cloud management, we're going to demonstrate bursting to AWS. We're going to have a manufacturer that's largely based on AWS standards, but deploying what they call AWS satellites, which essentially are private clouds running throughout their infrastructure to store their sensitive information and their, you know, core IP. And uh, that's going to be on, you know, on stage, that's going to be shown firsthand, and... Uh, There's a priority for cloud within HP, it's fair to say. Yeah, yeah <laughs> cloud is, cloud, again, cloud runs across the entire, but HP Helion is the, really the only pan yeah. HP brand. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. We're going to start to see a lot of the benefits from that investment, go back two years, just yeah. you know, even three, right. but go back even just two, you're going to start to see some of the fruits of the labor. And we're looking forward to that HP Discover. Bobby Patrick, the CMO of HP Cloud here inside theCUBE. We'll be right back with our wrap up of day two after this short break.